Hello there, my fellow high-tech blue aliens, and welcome back to a brand new video concerning the lore of the Tao. Previously, we did talk about the Tao in general, mostly, their biology, combat doctrine, and caste system. So today, I wanted to try something a little bit different. Because some of you have already asked me to do this, and because it is a cool topic, if nothing else, we are going to discuss the Tau Battlesuit. Today's episode is going to be an overview of these advanced pieces of war gear, and if you guys enjoy it, I will cover individual battlesuits sometime in the future. I am your host, the promoter of the greater good, GDN, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? A Tau battlesuit is an advanced powered combat exoskeleton that forms an integral part of the Tau Firecast military forces. Tau battlesuits incorporate many different kinds of Tau weapon systems and armor, and are the foremost signs of reputation and honor among the warriors of the Firecast. They are also the apex of Tau military technology. The Firecast believe that warfare is an art form, a discipline to be studied, practiced, mastered, and applied. First among their teachings is the Code of Fire, which promotes mobile, rapid warfare and a clear disdain for close combat, favoring instead the application of ranged firepower. The first Tau battlesuits were developed as a direct result of this martial philosophy providing hunter cadres of the firecast with increased mobility and superior firepower to better destroy their foes. The advancement of Tau battlesuits has mirrored the rate at which the Tau have expanded across the galaxy. The earliest of the prototypes were field tested during the early stages of the first sphere expansion, and although they were successful, the going was slow. In 576 and 39, by imperial calendar, Improvements in anti-gravitic motors were combined with relatively new Tau battlesuit technology at the time to form the first T-series battlesuits, which helped the Firecast complete the annexation of the Tashvar Sept. Though lumbering and inefficient when compared to their actual descendants, the T-series allowed the Firecast to engage foes otherwise beyond their capabilities and also gave the Earthcast a critical opportunity to pioneer and field test many technologies that would be crucial to their development of later models. The original fossil fuel-powered T-series was quickly replaced by the V-series, which instead was powered by nuclear fission reactors. Though early marks of the V-series inundated their pilots with deadly radiation, later models were able to account for this problem, at which point battlesuits began to be a mainstay of the military forces of the Tau Empire. It was not until the end of that first period of rapid growth that battlesuit technology began to regularly appear within the hunter cadres. Not surprisingly, it was at these final stages that the Tau won their largest battles, as elite formations of newly trained battlesuit pilots began to refine their tactics and take advantage of what the armored suits could actually do. By the start of the second sphere of expansion, great strides had been made in the Tau battlesuit design, particularly in the areas of power generation and the increased potency of weapon loadouts. By the end of this period, repulsor jump jet technology, augmented with anti-gravitic technology, came into its own, and the hunter cadres were conquering new planets in the name of the greater good at a rate never before seen. The greatest development, however, was the nano-crystalline alloy called Fiotak, that was dense, durable, and incredibly light. Comparable in protection to Space Marine power armor, it enabled the Earthcast to build more resilient battlesuits without hampering maneuverability, an important consideration when taking into account the Firecast's desire for fast mobile warfare. The result was the X-Series battlesuits, the most successful of which has been, and remains to this day, the XV-8 Crisis battlesuit. 
At present, Tao battlesuits were never more successful, and continual upgrades, different marks and variants, as well as new prototypes are continually developed to advance the greater good. Yet the Earth cast didn't stop there. As the Tau Empire expands across the stars, the hunter cadres encountered new and deadly alien races, prompting the Earth cast to develop new battlesuits to fulfill particular battlefield roles or face certain enemies. The compact XV-15 stealth battlesuit, for example, was developed for scouting and infiltration missions, but was upgraded to the bigger XV-25 following the Kappa Mortis incident, where the Tau feared their technology had been acquired by the Imperium in an operational state. The Great War of Confederation saw the development of the high-yield missile pod armament of the XV-88 broadside battlesuits to better tackle the Orc hordes assaulting their lines. The XV-104 Riptide was developed following contact with the Imperium's vast armies in the Damocles Gulf Crusade, and the XV-128 Storm Surge as a direct response to the Imperium's super-heavy tanks or titans. The Earth cast, it seems, is never resting in its quest for technological superiority. There is a broad range of Tau battlesuits, and each has their own specialized tactical role. All nomenclature of battlesuits mentioned here are their Imperial designations rather than the actual names for the different battlesuit variants used in the Tau lexicon. Imperial interrogations with Tau prisoners have yielded the term Herr ex Vre as the Tau name for their single pilot battlesuits. This roughly translates into Mantle of the Hero. Herr ex Vre has been transcribed phonetically into Low Gothic as the designation XV, which forms the foundational prefix of Imperial nomenclature for the different types of Tau battlesuits. Numerical designators applied to a type of battlesuit generally consist of one or two numerals placed after the XV prefix. The first number indicates the battlesuit's mass, with one being the lightest and smallest battlesuit in the Tau arsenal, to nine indicating a large, heavily armored and potently armed battlesuit. Those battlesuits which have a specific and confirmed specialized function are given a second numerical designator, while those considered general combat utility battlesuits only retain the first numeral, due to being considered the standard battlesuit of that mass class without any real specialization. It is of note that some battlesuits may have a secondary operational role, and so a rare third numeral, and so a rare third numeral may be included in their designation. Please note that the recently introduced XV-104 Riptide, XV-107 Ravarna, and XV-109 Ivara battlesuits are uniquely named, for their three numbers are meant to be read as 10-4, 10-7, and 10-9 respectively with 10 being the mass class, and 4, 7, and 9 being the designator of their tactical role. Next, I would like to list for you, so you can better understand, according to this nomenclature, all the types of battlesuits by Imperial classification. Also note that these numbers should be read as XVX1, for example, where the XV indicates the unit as a Tau battlesuit, and the second X represents the number from 1 to 10, indicating the mass class of the battlesuit. The XVX-1, a battlesuit of any mass class believed to only exist as a theoretical prototype or development model. XVX-2, a prototype battlesuit of any mass class which has progressed to field trial testing. XVX-3, a battlesuit of any mass class which has not entered mass production and has been assigned permanently to its pilot. XVX-4 A battlesuit of any mass class approved for the command and control role or is in the final stages of field testing. XVX-5 A battlesuit of any mass class outfitted with Tau stealth technology. 
XVX6, an airspace battlesuit unit of any mass class. XVX7, a battlesuit of any mass class intended to facilitate infiltration. XVX8, a fire support battlesuit unit of any mass class. XVX9, a battlesuit of any mass class designed for a frontline assault. There's also variations on the standard XVX naming convention consisting of a dash followed by two other numbers indicating a variant of the suit itself without altering its battlefield role. For example, the XV-8-02 Crisis Iridium Battlesuit is a variant of the standard XV-8 Crisis with upgraded armor composites. Being allowed to use a battlesuit, particularly the massive XV-8 Crisis Battlesuit, is a high honor among the Tau Firecast, and is only granted to Tau Fire Warriors who have earned the rank and privilege required to be granted this responsibility. Such a privilege can only be attained after several Terran years of progressing through the ranks of the Firecast as a Fire Warrior. Tau battlesuits are only piloted by those Fire Warriors who have proven themselves in battle and completed their first trial by fire to earn the Firecast rank of Shas Ui. Often, the first battlesuits that these Fire Warriors learn to pilot are the XV-15 and the XV-25 stealth suit to complete their training in the arts of infiltration and ambush that they begin as Pathfinders. Once their time utilizing a stealth suit is complete, they are given the honor of piloting an XV-8 Crisis Battlesuit and becoming a member of the Elite of the Firecast. After this service, Fire Warriors will normally move on to train in the use of the XV-88 Broadside Battlesuit. While some Tau Fire Warriors may skip this particular stage, it is considered important by many Tau Commanders for their veteran warriors seeking greater command roles within the Firecast to have had some experience in the heavy fire support role. If he succeeds in this demanding role too, he will go on to be assigned to a Tau Commander's Battlesuit Bodyguard team and eventually will become a Tau Commander once he attains the rank of Shas El himself. Only the greatest commanders and warriors are assigned experimental weaponry or even entirely unique battlesuits. Such prototypes have turned the tide of many battles, where the Tau Empire might have suffered grievous defeats without their pilot's intervention. In the hands of their esteemed wielders, their equipment can become the stuff of legends within the Tau Empire, for the tools and the weapons that heroes use to accomplish their greatest deeds are tied into their story. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about Tau Battlesuits for today. Are you a fan of these mecha-esque pieces of war technology? Or do you think they're OP ranged nonsense? Do you have or had any of them in your army? Let us know and discuss in the comments below. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching to the end and I wish you all a great day. May the greater good light your way.